Hi there everyone, and welcome to the third video in my Betaflight 4.5 Tuning Masterclass. In this video, we're going to be looking at rates. Rates in Betaflight determine how the flight controller interprets the movement of your sticks and converts them into commands to the quad, so they have a huge impact on how your quad feels to fly. In this video, we're going to be going through every setting and I'm going to be taking you through a process which will allow you to get your rates tuned to perfection so you get the perfect stick feel on any quad. It's a lot to cover in just one video, so let's not waste any more time. Let's dive right into it. Before we carry on, I want to let you know that my entire Betaflight 4.5 tuning guide is available in PDF format on my Patreon. It covers filters, PIDs and rates tuning and is a fantastic resource whether you're tuning a quad for the first time or you're an experienced pilot looking for a reference on what each setting does and how to tune it. I'll put a link to that down in the video description. Before we talk about tuning your rates and RC filtering, I wanted to give you an overview of where these things fit into the whole control flow in Betaflight. Everything starts with your stick movement. When you move the stick, you're giving an input to the quad and that input is transmitted by your radio to the receiver in your quad and the receiver passes it on to the flight controller. Betaflight then applies rates and RC filtering to that RC command input to give a set point. That set point is what Betaflight thinks you want the quad to do. The PID controller is responsible for making the quad do exactly what the set point says. And if you've got a reasonably good PID tune, the difference between the movement of the quad and the set point that you're giving it will be very small. This means that rates and RC filtering or RC smoothing are absolutely vital to getting the right stick feel because if the stick movement isn't corresponding to the right set point, the quad is never gonna feel good to fly. In this video, we're gonna be looking at how you can tune rates and RC smoothing to get that feel just the way you want it. You're going to be able to find all of the settings that we're gonna talk about in this video in Betaflight Configurator under the PID tuning section in the Rate Profile Settings tab apart from RC smoothing, which you can find in the receiver section. We're gonna start by talking about throttle. And I think throttle is one of the inputs that's most important to get tuned correctly, because it is so, so important for altitude control. And if you're flying in close proximity to objects or close to the ground, having really precise throttle control is vital for feeling confident when you're flying. The first setting we're going to look at is throttle limit scale. And this is a setting that is becoming more and more important, I think, as motors are getting more and more powerful. What throttle limit scale does is it scales down your throttle. So it makes full throttle on your sticks less than full throttle in beta flight. What this achieves is a proportional scaling of all the throttle positions, which means that you get more throttle resolution. So you give up the top end, but you get more throttle resolution. And you might ask, why would I want to do this? Well, if like me, you rarely, if ever, go to full throttle and you can fly, you know, three, four, five packs and you're only ever getting to about 75, 80% throttle, then throttle limit scale is for you. You just want to bring that maximum down to 80%, let's say, and that's going to give you plenty of throttle for when you want to do your dynamic moves, but it's going to give you more throttle resolution than you had before over the throttle range that you use most often. The question that I get with this is, well, isn't this just wasting all the extra power that I have in the motor? And the answer is, no, it's not. The flight controller can still request motors to go to full power. And the reason it might do this is if you're doing a sharp move, a sharp turn, a quick flip, um, a yaw spin, something like that. Those types of moves will still have the motors commanded to full power. Throttle limit scale only affects your stick input. The flight controller still has all of the power of the motor available to control the quad and keep it super responsive. So throttle limit is actually a really great tool for getting more throttle resolution without any drawbacks if you don't use the last sort of 20% of your throttle. The other type of throttle limit in beta flight is throttle limit clip. And what this does is it just clips your throttle at a certain value. And then the stick movement above that just doesn't do anything. So your stick movement above, let's say 75% in this case, doesn't actually lead to any change in the throttle setting. This means that you get a limit on your maximum throttle value without affecting any of the throttle values lower than that. And overall, I don't recommend using this. Why would you give up the top portion of your stick travel in order to limit your throttle 
without getting an increase in throttle resolution. With throttle limit scale, you get more resolution by limiting your throttle. With throttle limit clip, you limit your throttle but don't get any more resolution. So I don't recommend using this. If you're gonna limit your throttle, I would always use scale. Another fantastic and much underused setting for controlling your throttle stick feel is throttle expo. What Throttle Expo allows you to do is selectively flatten a region of your throttle curve to get more throttle resolution around that area. There are two controls. Throttle Mid determines the location of this flattened area in terms of stick travel, and Throttle Expo determines how extreme the flattening is. So if you set a Throttle Mid value of 0.5 and a Throttle Expo value of 0.5, you get a significantly flattened region at 50% stick travel. If, however, you set throttle mid to 0.25, that flattened region moves down to 25% stick travel. And if you increase throttle expo to 1.0, you actually get a completely flat region around that 25% uh, that stick travel at the expense of less throttle resolution at high and low throttle respectively. I've been experimenting a lot with throttle expo, and I've personally found that I prefer setting throttle mid to zero. That puts the flattest part of the throttle curve at zero throttle, and by changing throttle expo, I can trade off low throttle resolution for resolution at full throttle. And so you can have more resolution when you're low in the throttle, you're cruising around close to the ground and in close proximity to the objects, and you want all that resolution, and you can get it just by giving up a bit of resolution at full throttle. And to be honest, I don't care about throttle resolution at full throttle, just lick the stamp and send it. You know, doesn't matter if it's 98% or 100% throttle at that point. But the difference between 5 or 6% throttle when you're cruising around close to the ground can make all the difference. And that's where Throttle Expo really shines. Now, I do have to warn you that some irresponsible engineers are going out of their way to create more and more powerful motors for our FPV drones. And when you're flying a powerful motor, Throttle Scale and Throttle Expo are invaluable tools because they can allow you to achieve excellent low throttle response even with a very, very powerful motor. So please make sure that you're using these tools and that you're getting the most out of Throttle Scale and Throttle Expo when you're flying the supernovas. The next setting we're gonna look at is RC smoothing. And you can find this in the receiver section of Betaflight Configurator, and it's down here in the bottom right. RC smoothing is a must have setting, especially for freestyle or cinematic pilots. What it does is it filters your stick inputs to remove any finger shake, any judder, any jitter from your gimbals, and it creates a beautifully smooth set point for your quad to follow. The default RC smoothing setup is for racing, which means that if you're not doing racing, the default setup is going to be wrong for you and you need to change it. To tune RC smoothing, you're going to set the smoothing mode to on, set point cutoff type to auto, feed forward cutoff type to auto, and then you're going to change this auto factor. If you're flying freestyle, then a value of 50 to 60 is going to be about right for you. If you're flying a more cinematic style, you're going to want to start at 90 or 100 and tune up from there. And so that's a huge difference from the default, and that's why the default is wrong for most of us. The final setting we're going to talk about is probably the one you're all most familiar with, and that's rates. Rates in Betaflight control how the movement of your stick is interpreted by the flight controller. A large rate means that the quad will rotate quickly for a given movement of the stick. Rates are split into three sections, and we're going to be talking about actual rates, which are now the beta flight default. We have center sensitivity, which controls the sensitivity of the quad around the center stick position, so how sensitive the quad is going to be to small deflections of the stick away from center. Then we have max rate, which is going to determine how fast the quad is going to rotate at full stick deflection. And then we have Expo, which controls the shape of the curve between center stick and max stick deflection. Center stick sensitivity is probably the one that's most important to get right initially. When you have the right center stick sensitivity, the quad moves as you expect it to when you move the stick. Center sensitivity is about finding the right balance between having a quad that's very precise and accurate through tight gaps and not feeling like you have a dead zone at the middle of the stick where nothing happens when you move it. If you're doing a lot of proximity flying, cinematic flying, or you're just flying precisely in tight spaces, you're going to want a lower value of center sensitivity, around 50 or so. Typical freestyle flying can have a sensitivity of somewhere between 50 and 100. If you're doing spang spang, other dynamic flying styles, some line of sight, 
or racing, you're probably gonna want a quad that is more responsive around the center stick position, and therefore you could set your center sensitivity of around 150. Tuning your max rate is all about finding the right balance. You don't wanna be in the situation where your max rate is too low, and even when you go to full stick deflection, the quad doesn't turn fast enough for you to complete the types of tricks that you wanna do. But similarly, you don't wanna be in the position where you never move your stick more than 50% of the way out from center, because if you go further than that, the quad just turns way too fast and you can't control it. So you've gotta get that balance right. And typically for racing and cinematic freestyle, a rate of about 500 as a max rate is plenty. If you're doing a slightly more dynamic freestyle, then maybe 700 is okay. And if you're wanting to emulate people like Mr. Steele who do those very, very fast snap flips and rolls, then that's gonna be a max rate of around 1100. Typically what I would suggest when you're tuning max rate is to start off at the bottom end of this scale. So set your max rate to 400 or 500. If you're then finding that the quad is taking an age to do a barrel roll or a flip and you need it to go faster, then you can increase your max rate. It's much better to have to increase your max rate than to have a max rate that's too high and find that you're not using the full stick travel and you're not getting full stick resolution. And that brings us neatly to the end of this tuning video. I hope you enjoyed it. And don't forget, you can get my entire Betaflight 4.5 tuning masterclass in PDF format on my Patreon. And there are links to that down in the video description. That's all I have for you for today. So until next time, I wish you all very, very happy flying.